for the tardy. Um, can we, um, Madam Clerk, can we uh, do the roll? Mr. Jacobs, Mr. Morrissey, here. Mr. Shim, here. Mrs. Klein, here. Mr. Amos, here. Mr. Schmidt, here. Mrs. Jewin, here. Motion approved. The agenda is proposed. Second. The motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The agenda is open. Um, I did have a conversation with Mr. Jacobs a little while ago. He was in the office at the time, so he's going to try to make it as soon as he can, just for reference. Uh, it is uh, budget presentation time again, and uh, it's our opportunity to kind of present um, from all the different suggestions that I got from council to try to... <coughs> put some things in there and uh, work it around together. If one of you fine gentlemen over there would like to pass out some handouts, that would be uh, uh, very much appreciated. All right, so we'll, we'll start um, just with uh, uh, some information uh, that we have to kind of had under consideration before we move to the um, line item uh, changes uh, as well. Did you say something? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Is that the same thing? Same thing? Yeah, just keep, if you got extra ones, you can send them back. So, the two handouts. Yeah, we got them. Okay. Have them, have them, not got them. Ready? Ready? Yep. All right. So, the first thing we're going to talk about, and we have talked about this at an earlier work session. I should say good afternoon, everybody, first. <laughs> I guess I'm in a hurry right now. So, our, our valuation trends for this year, as we discussed a little bit at an earlier meeting, our total assessed valuation is 3.89. Excuse me, can, can everyone hear? Yeah, if it slide the mic over. It's just I can't see you with this one. <laughs> that's the problem. Oh, that's him, that's him um, again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so a total assessed value in the city is $3.89 billion. Um, and of that, only $2.27 billion is taxable. So that's where one large difference is between the total property we see around us and what we actually collect property taxes from. And we also have about 279 million currently in TIF districts. So our FY19 valuations, although there were increases in total assessed value of 1.55%, the taxable value actually declined. So the base that we earn our paycheck from actually went down by about a percent. And I think it's important to remember that as we talk about budgets this year. So we looked a little bit at what caused that valuation drop. This slide just tries to show a little bit about what's happening. Residential is the top red line, and that's really our bread and butter for our property taxes. And it did have a decline. It looks pretty slight on here just because it's large numbers. But the reduction for this year is 26.6 million. The next line down, which is commercial, we saw a reduction of 12.7 million in the taxable value of commercial properties. Then industrial and utility properties, I combined those, they saw a net reduction of 2 million. And our new category, which is multi-residential, that interestingly did see an increase of 17.7 million. But the net of all that is a $23.6 million reduction in our taxable value of properties. So then another question I had is how is that affecting who pays property taxes? And as most of you will remember, as we've discussed this in prior years, the state has been increasing the portion of the total property tax dollars paid by residential every year for a number of years. This year, for the first time in a long time, we're seeing that change a little bit. The residential rollback factor was decreased, and what that means is the value of your house that's being taxed is less by 2.3%.
that's where most of that $26 million loss in residential value comes from. It's all from a change in the factor at the state level. So this year, where last year, 62% of our taxes were paid by residential, that's dropping to 61%, 32% by commercial, 4% by our industrial and utilities, and 3% by the multi-residential. And that category, if you remember, is new since about fiscal 2015, I think. This is a slide we've looked at a couple of other times. You can see that Waterloo is the fifth largest in terms of population in the size of cities across the state. Unfortunately, in terms of our taxable property value, we're ranked 12th. So that's a pretty significant difference there to have the largest population in number five, but we only have 12th largest in property value, which is how our property taxes are calculated. We also included on this slide the ranking of the tax rate, and I'll talk about that a little bit more because we all know the tax rate is only one factor of the formula that drives property taxes, but our rate, if you took that in isolation, was second, which directly correlates to the fact that our property values are the lowest. The next slide we have, we've done some research comparing ourselves to other large cities in Iowa, and we wanted to show you how much we brought that levy rate down over the last number of years. We are actually now third lowest. Last year we were second lowest across the state. Oops, looks like we lost our TVs. <laughs> um, so we are working very hard to bring the rate down, which does affect the taxes as well. Um, Iowa City is still leading the pack on that, and Ames has had some strong declines in there this year. We also looked at property taxes paid per capita. That's another very common measure among cities. And things begin to, the picture begins to change a little bit when you see this. Waterloo, actually our taxes per capita are 7% less than the average or $45, almost $46 less than the average. We're right in the middle of the pack when you compare the largest 20 cities. So when you use different measures to compare how we do, you get different results. Another thing that we talk about is the square miles of our city. And we do have a very large city in terms of square miles. When you calculate our property taxes per square mile, and compare them with the other 10 largest cities, we have the very lowest. And Waterloo's are 652,399 per square mile. Iowa City has the highest. Theirs is two point, almost 2.3 million. That's a pretty significant difference. Look, can I add one point too? Yes. Um, so um, taking a look at our preliminary half year numbers uh, with regards to housing, which is important, um, last year, we were at about 43 houses, roughly we're at 37 now. But according to our data, we are, the value of the 37 is $2.5 million higher than it was last year, which shows, you know, we're trending in the right direction, but um, it's kind of a slow pace, but we're $2.5 million ahead of where we were at with less houses this year. So that, that gives us a good opportunity moving forward. Mr. Mayor, could, is it okay to ask questions? We, we want to zip through here. I wanted to make that known. Okay. If it's a very quick question um, before she moves on. It's just fiscal year 18 taxes per square mile. Is that uh, what is charged per resident? Within that, I mean, is that how this is computed? No, I think it's total property tax dollars that are collected received. per square mile. Okay, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. The next slide we have, I, I get asked about our debt pretty often. So this is another common comparison among the larger cities is to say how much of our debt capacity have we used and how much is left. Um, you can see, again, Waterloo is about fifth in terms of the amount we've used, which it correlates well with our population, um, right in the middle of the pack again. Um, we have 
use just over half at about 55%, and we have about 44-ish percent available. We also looked at monthly utility charges, and again, as you compare us with the other 10 largest cities, Waterloo has the very lowest in utility charges as well. So we have a lot of things that are a good value for our money. When we compare city staffing levels, Waterloo begins to become lower than the average. We're third from the bottom of those top 10 cities. That, and this is budgeted positions of 549, and that includes all funds. It's not only your property tax supported positions, that's everything. So I think we are already um, having our staff do more with less maybe than some other cities are able to do. That's just some research that we wanted to share comparing us to our um, sister cities, I guess I'll call them. So then I think we're ready to go into our proposed budget highlights. And we're going to start out, the levy proposed right now is $17.7.7629. Two nine, and we decided to show that to you broken out by some significant statistics. Police and fire, which is of course one of the main services provided by cities, actually makes up $12 and almost $12.15 of that levy. So two thirds of the property tax dollar goes to support police and fire. That does not include a share of charges for human resources or finance or the other departments that support police and fire, that is strictly the actual police and fire departments. Our debt service levy, we're proposing at 2.98828, and that takes 17% of that 1776. Then, as you know, we have two voter voted in levies, one for the Grout Museum District and one for our library. That knocks off another 54 cents. So all other departments that are supported by property taxes in the city consume only $2 and two and less than nine cents of the <coughs> remaining levy, or 11% cent, 11 of the remaining levy is for all other areas. So sometimes I've heard people talk about not wanting to touch or reduce police and fire, and we thought it was important to illustrate if we want to shrink our levy, and we only want to touch all other services, that's only 11% of the bill. So it's, it, we're trying to show you how difficult it really is to reduce the levy substantially without touching those other items. I've also provided a breakout of, of the other levy, and that's kind of by our major program. Um, the first two, Emergency Management Association and Building Inspections, on the state forms, those are actually part of public safety. I've pulled them out and separated them here. And when there's a number in parentheses, that means that they are generating more revenue than they are using in expenses. So when you see parentheses, it's kind of a net profit. Um, public Works takes just under 78 cents. Health and Social Services is 11, just under 11 and a half cents. Culture and Recreation, as is typical in most cities, is the next largest category after police and fire, and that is about $2.32. Community and economic development is 12.6 cents. And then we get to some others that actually generate more revenue. General government, because we record certain revenues in that category, actually shows that a net revenue. I've included the state backfill on a separate line and the use of fund balance. And that's how we get to that other 11% of the property tax levy. So to get to when we talk about that tax levy rate that Mayor's proposing of 17.76, that would actually result in a reduction in residential property taxes of 1.41%. There would be a commercial increase, slight, 0.93%. And I think commercial has seen at least a 15% reduction over the last seven years. So we're, that's turning around just slightly, again, because of the rollback change. The multi-residential, the new category, which multi-residential properties, I probably should have mentioned that earlier, up until about 2014, those were categorized as commercial properties. And at that time, they were always 100% taxable. 
when the Property Tax Reform Act came in and commercial and industrial started being charged, having to roll back so that they were only charged at 90% of the value, they adopted a new schedule for multi-residential that will eventually, is designed to bring it down to be taxed the same as a residential property. So multi-residential this year sees a 3.66% reduction, the largest reduction of any category. And that, that's all that I have for the presentation today. There's, we've given you the adjustments that we've made. Um, and Mary, I don't know if you want to yeah, and so, through that. So we had the presentations of, of uh, what does a 2.5% impact do? What does a 5% impact do? Um, so studied all of those areas, um, took into account um, some of council's requests and um, made some decreases in some following areas and also uh, some increases with regards to uh, revenue generated. And you can go line by line and see um, where we were able to find some savings. Um, some of the departments, um, it's, it's uh, skin on the bones. Um, uh, but we're continuing to take look look at ways to be able to share services and do different things um, as well. Um, so building inspections, as you can see, uh, increase uh, with regards to uh, revenue, uh, human rights uh, reduction, planning and zoning, um, you know, increases in revenue. Um, in some of our departments, there is no way to to increase revenues because they're not that type of department. Um, legal fees reduce. Um, I think uh, there's a line items in the mayor's office was a reduction. Uh, IT uh, is mostly reductions, cultural and arts. Um, and when you go through this, some of these departments received a 2.5, some received a 5 point. Uh, some of them may even be a little bit more uh, deeper as well. Um, you see library, airport. Uh, with the airport, we wanted to uh, make that as um, um, uh, uh, general fund neutral. So that's where that number comes from. Uh, HR, uh, police. Um, police is, we asked for an increase in uh, revenues as well that equates to part of um, there's uh, fire uh, there are two positions for uh, fire that are on there um, to not be filled uh, leisure uh, about a 64 which is I believe that was there 2.5 uh, clerk finance 87 87 um, decrease along with some revenue increases. Um, we lost some dollars with regards to the cable TV from the removal of the peg fee. Uh, um, it's a, a cable fee, and I believe that's the state that um, where that fee comes from, right? Yeah. Where that the revenue? That peg fee stands for public education and government channels. We have had a franchise agreement with Mediacom for some years, and we are at the maximum that the state allows us to charge of 5%, but we also were able to get a 35 cents per month per subscriber fee. As of June of 18, that franchise agreement is expiring, and Mediacom has elected to go under a state franchise agreement. The laws, those laws were all changed about five years ago, so we can only 5% is the maximum that we can charge, so we will lose that peg fee starting July 1st, unfortunately. Um, and uh, central garage estimates, uh, some of these are not general fund areas. Um, and then uh, with the insurance, uh, we've had a couple good years in a row, uh, so we were able to reduce that. Um, Council, I had none. Uh, there was nothing in there. Um, and one one area uh, is to have a 0.5 franchise fee increase. 
Um, we had, um, I received proposals anywhere from zero to about 1.25, I believe. Um, I would, going above that, um, right now, um, we'd have to talk about it, but that's something that should be saved um, for a little bit later if we decide to do it. There are some other cities that probably utilize all of that. Um, and then uh, debt service, which was something that's probably music to everyone's ears, um, went down as well. And then uh, the Met request, which they've asked for this for a couple years in a row, we can't, I don't believe we can do it at this time. So uh, with all of those changes, uh, we're at 17.76. And for the most part, I believe that we can uh, continue to provide services and that we could continue to move to our uh, restructuring or reorg plan to realize some more savings in the future. So um, we got about three to five minutes if you have some questions or you can give me a call tomorrow or sometime. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. So I see on here residential change is um, a, a decrease in property taxes of 1.41%. Um, when was the last time we had um, a change that was of that caliber? Is, is that normal every year, or is, does it increase? Do you have any history on that? Um, I believe in, Michelle, 2000, but this is probably the biggest decrease that we've had in the last, what, 15 to 17 years. So we can get that, but I think it's probably the biggest decrease in in, in at least over a decade or two. To residential? Is what you're yeah, to residential. Um, multifamily, um, that's been interesting because of the changes on the state level. They're trying to move that to shift to equal residential, um, residential rates. So there was a lot of revenue that was lost when they made that change for cities as well. Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Um, explain the rollback replacement change. Are we relying on the full 1.8 next year or whatever is going to be close to that? That's a good question. Um, Michelle, can you explain that rollback replacement change and then I'll talk about the um, commercial rollback? The, the change that's on here is just a change due to the change in the levy rate because that's based on the levy rate. So we, we have not factored in any state legislation at this time that would change the calculation. And is that number, that number, even if they don't make any changes, that's the, the amount that we are decreased by what they've done. So we lose revenue, if I, we lose revenue regardless, right? Is that right or explain? If we it? lower our levy, we do, yes. Yep, so I've, I've estimated, the other thing that's difficult to estimate, they froze the pot of money that all cities can get statewide last year. So we may get a slightly smaller, even if they decided to pay out 100%, that's, it all depends on what everybody else is getting. So I put in a very slight reduction for that prior to the new legislation that's being proposed at the state level. So the actual general, <clears throat> Levy's portion is probably about 1.35 million is what we have in here today. And, and um, I love to talk about some options about if the, I haven't heard two thirds being gone. I've heard the governor's proposal left the backfill in and I think they're working for that. There is a proposal on the floor to take a look at time limits as well, if I'm not mistaken, whether it be a three year, five year, I haven't heard the complete elimination unless someone, someone said that. But that's why I'm very careful with that 0.5 right now. And so I don't think that this is just my opinion to go above that right now. If we need some extra cash generated at a certain time, the council has the discretion to always raise that uh, franchise fee. But that's why I don't think it should go any higher. If we come back and they say we need an additional four hundred thousand dollars or so, you do have some you do have some options that we can use right now. Mr. Mayor. Um, okay. are you finished with your question? I had a follow up. I think it's very dangerous to count on all that money. Right, right. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor and Michelle, I was just wondering, we pass a budget based on what you're saying here and then um, on March 8th and then after that they come out and they do something that reduces that significantly, then what are our options at that point in time once we pass the budget? Tax, right? I think you have a couple fee. options at that. You can't change the property tax at that point. You can look at other sources of revenue, such as the utility franchise fee, or we would have to reduce expenses. And and we have been through this before in about, I don't know if it was 2004 or 2006, the last time the state <coughs> broke a replacement revenue promise to us. So, yeah, it Mr. was. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Michelle, would, would we be able to use part of the rainy day fund too? Or is that not reachable after we pass a budget March 8th? No, that's an option that you would have also. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. I just don't know why we would want to set ourselves up for this. Other cities have been very wise and have not figured that number into the budget. I think we should be smarter. And, you know, uh, so, so we, have some, we have some opportunities for revenue generation. Um, you bring up a good point, too. I just had a conversation with um, a colleague in Des Moines, and so they're looking at um, either a 20 or 30 percent um, levy rate increase if they don't get their current bond referendum passed March 6th. Um, so some folks have already certified their budgets. Our neighbor, um, they they um, didn't include it, or they they included it in their mix, but other places have already certified a budget. This conversation, um, you know, for the most part, folks were thinking, yeah, it could potentially be on the table, but um, it wouldn't be this year, it would be in 20. And one of the sessions that we went through, it was like potentially 20. So I, I haven't heard anything where they said it's going to be the complete elimination of the rollback. But it is an interesting year, and it's an election year um, for legislators, too. So that'll be something that we'll have to discuss. But absolutely OK with having some more dialogue, if you would like. I think it's absolutely imperative that we don't count on that money. Um, I think the rumor out there is that we may get a third at best. OK. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Well, at this point in time, I, the, we've got three days until the budget hearing, mm -hmm. but I know that, that I have some proposals to look at. I don't know if anybody else does uh, for sure, but uh, when can we have that kind of conversation? Is that, or is that all reserved for Thursday night? That would be Thursday. And we, I took a lot of suggestions as well um, on some of these and tried to come up with in the middle. But... Um, we can have that conversation Thursday also. If there's something um, very pressing, let me know. But this is what I'm going to place on the agenda for you to approve. If you got a couple of amend uh, amendments, um, we'll see how that goes. But this is what I'll propose based upon what I receive prior to asking for um, suggestions. Mr. Mayor, as a follow-up, the... Um so if we have proposals there, are we going to have any time? Before, are we going to have a work session or anything on, on Thursday so that we can go over those prior to the actual meeting taking place? Mm, I haven't thought about that. I was just going to have a public meeting and those things can be discussed, but I want to talk about that. We, or we can talk about that and see how that works procedurally. I don't know. Because you can't, you can't vote. Because this is, it's not a work session. This is a... I think the only thing... Council may want to be cautious about is if you have additional budget suggestions that you want Mayor Michelle to take into consideration, they need to be provided to them as soon as possible because the point of Thursday's meeting is to have the public hearing to actually adopt the budget. So if there's any other calculations that need to take place and, and in order to have those conversations on Thursday, it would probably be best to have them sooner rather than later. And I know we've had this discussion in the past, and that is that if we're handed stuff at the last minute and we don't have time to look at it, then it's very difficult to make an informed decision without that information in front of us. So that's why I would hope, you know, I know that I've submitted mine to Michelle, 
and I want to uh, have the opportunity to go talk to her about that again. And I'm sure that there are other people on council who have some ideas about what they'd like to see for a budget. And uh, so that we're, uh, we're spot on with what we would want to at least discuss with the council, with the rest of the council, as far as what our proposals are without even taking a vote so that the council sees that there are other options out there. And they're presented with those ideas. I have no problem with my proposals being given to the rest of council. Uh, they're there now, but I would hope that the rest of the council, if they had some suggestions or proposals, that they would present those to us rather than us being handed those at 5.30 p.m. on March 8th, Mr. Mayor. Well, we need to wrap up. We, we need to just figure out how to do that. We'll talk tonight or in the morning and figure out how council can get all of that without procedurally I, Could I don't we know have a work hand. session? Is that possible or is that we're running out of time? I, I'm not going to make a decision right now, okay. but that's why I asked for information a while ago so we can put all this stuff together. Um, so we'll talk about it tonight and tomorrow and get back to council as well. Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. One last question. At this levy rate, 17.76, would we be the highest in the state for cities our size? Mm -mm. Nope. We are at number two now, right? The number two, and I'm hoping within the next year and a half that's going to change. Miss, Miss, excuse me. We need to wrap we need to wrap wrap this up. I just and these to, are questions you can ask. Mr. Morris. Would it be one one final thing in, in response to uh, Councilwoman um, Klein's statement? I, I know that I have checked with with various uh, cities, and I know that Council Bluffs has raised theirs to like 18.26 from 17.9 yeah, yeah. to 18.26. Yeah. That's where theirs is well, let's, now. Let's close this down. We'll get that information for Monday night, or we'll get it to Council. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it would be interesting if we could find out how many other cities are using their rollback income. Is that something we yeah, can we'll, find we'll, out we'll, easily? We'll try to figure that out. We absolutely okay. need to close gotcha. this down. Motion to adjourn. Move Second. to adjourn. Motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Roll call, please. Hold on a second. I don't have my minutes <laughs> on. Sorry. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs>
got in there. Somebody make a motion to approve that. Madam Chairperson, we've got a refund request in the amount of $210 for garbage fees paid on a vacant property located at 520 Elm Street. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Terrific. Ask for a motion for the preauthorization to spend over $1,000. Madam Chairperson. I'd like to make the following uh, motions, pre-authorization to expend over $1,000. First is for building maintenance with the amount and estimated shipping and handling of $1,324 for semi-annual fire suppression <coughs> system for Five Sullivan Brothers Convention Center. Next is from the fire department with amount and estimated shipping and handling, $1,953, plus $200 shipping and handling for primer sub-SE 12-volt VPE pump. Next is a garage and mountain estimated shipping and handling of $2,181.98 plus $400 shipping and handling from pins and links for motor grader. And next is leisure services with the mountain estimated shipping and handling of $3,280 for advertising of the three municipal golf courses, Gates, Warren Memorial, and South Hills during the March Madness College basketball tournaments. Next is from Leisure Services, Mountain Estimated Shipping Handling of $13,952 for trees for the Plant Some Shade Project in partnership with the Iowa Department of Natural Resources and Mid-American Energy. Next is from Mayor Quentin Hart for the Mountain Estimated Shipping Handling of $650 estimated for the Mayor's Top Teen Awards and Mayor's Volunteer Awards to be held in Waterloo. And next is sanitation with mountain estimated shipping handling of $16,694.63 for cart tipper and dumpster kick bar for the rear loader truck number 151201. Next is the sewer department with the mountain estimated shipping handling of $8,811.18 for radio communication systems. We'll install equipment, um, calibrate Kenwood radio and Zetron model 18 plus a program caller ID into 37 lift stations radios for testing lift station alarms for proper operations. And uh, finally, is traffic operations about an estimated shipping handling of $15,488.66 for 16 Miller burned octa tube eight sided tapered steel street light poles. And that was a tongue twister. <laughs> and excuse me, uh, <laughs> Chief. Um, uh, tree lore, I probably really goofed that one up. So excuse my mispronunciation there, Pat. Second. Uh, there's one more, isn't there? No, that was it, Madam Chairperson. Oh, okay. For the pump? The sub 12V pump? What happened to that? That was number seven, Madam Chairperson. Moved it up. I'm scared. Sorry. Thank okay. you. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Madam aye. Chairperson. Yes, sir. Uh, discussion, please. Yes. Uh, number six, what is that? Is that a, a annual and semi-annual inspection? And also, is that a building that we no longer own? Or? Who would like to own? Noel's going to address that. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. The City of Waterloo does still own the Phi Sullivan Brothers Convention Center. We're working on uh, trying to close on the previously approved development agreement, uh, disposal of that with Mr. Edwin Leslie, but we have not done that. This is the semi-annual fire suppression system um, that's required by fire safety codes for occupancy of that building and um, for them to be able to utilize the building. So it's like an inspection or a test? Correct. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same? Okay. Thank you. Then we, I would make a motion to approve the project budget for the Mid-American Energy Plant Some Shade, number 17 project, funded with a state grant in the amount of $8,201.20 and the sale of trees in the amount of $6,750 for a total project cost of $14,951.20 as submitted by Leisure Services. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, make a motion um, to approve as contained in accounts payable invoice report dated March 5th, 2018 in the amount of 
uh, be received, placed on file, approved, and forwarded to the full council. Is second. there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's City Council meeting. Madam Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Shim? Here. Mrs. Klein? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mrs. Jewin? Here. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a full council. Uh, we have our uh, moment of silence, and after that, we'll be led in the pledge by Chief Troka. Please join me in a moment of silence. All right, thank you, Chief. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Make a motion to accept and approve the agenda as proposed and the minutes of the February 26th regular session meeting. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I just have a, a procedural question, or I guess a couple of questions from a procedural nature. So I think it now would be an appropriate time to ask this. Uh, having to do with item number 14. And uh, this has nothing to do with item number 14, but what I was wondering about is, uh, in the past, I know I and some other council members have asked to uh, add an item to the agenda, and we were told that in order to do that, a council member had to have a uh, certain amount of support from other council members to put that item on the agenda. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure who yeah, this is a question for. I think probably, probably put them on, um, Kelly, to place an item on the agenda. Um, I know that since I've been clerk, there have been some council requests to have items added to the agenda, um, and we've just added them to the agenda. Um, I know Mr. Morrissey's added some items. Mr. Lind has at, had some items added to the agenda. I have heard from some council members that under a previous mayor, there was a requirement to have X number of council members in agreement prior to adding items to the agenda. I have, however, looked through our code, looked through other types of documents that I found in my clerk's office and have not found that it's written down anywhere. So since you've been clerk, mm -hmm. you've allowed a single council member to put something on the agenda? Along with the mayor as well. Yeah, we, we've- uh, But without any other council member. Correct, spirit. yep. Um, and, uh, there are two council members, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Amos yes. uh, was in support of at least bringing this for the agenda. I don't know how we vote, but at least taking a look at it um, as well. Um, the motion to rescind um, last week um, was asked in the appropriate manner. And when we were going to get to this question, I was going to have um, Dave stand up and give an explanation about where we're at at this point, whether, you know, some of the questions that I was asked last week and the previous week, and then I was going to have um, our clerk explain exactly what this is talking, talking about before we get there. So there was support. And I have allowed, um, whether or not I agree with him or not, mm -hmm. still have allowed some motions to get on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and when is the deadline for adding something to the agenda? It's Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Not Tuesdays. Correct, Wednesday. Um, and when was this item added to the agenda? Because I think as of Thursday afternoon, it wasn't on my Novus. It was submitted to me at the meeting by Mr. Morrissey, and I added it to the agenda on Friday. But deadlines for getting items to the clerk's office to be reviewed is Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Gotcha. Um, and I wanted to see if it was a legal 
um, do that based upon the things that have happened. So. Gotcha. And then um, my understanding also is that for an item to be brought back, it needs to be brought back by somebody from the prevailing side. Now, is that what you were referencing a little bit earlier? Excellent, excellent question. So there's a there's a, is a motion to reconsider, and that can be um, that can be asked later on in that meeting or the following meeting, um, but. That can be asked, but it's up to those on the prevailing side if they want to bring that back. Uh, the motion to rescind is a little bit different than the motion to reconsider. So it was, I had to make sure it was right place. So that's different than a motion to reconsider. Okay. And so then going forward, uh, anybody on the council, anytime that a vote does not go their way, we're basically going to be allowing to have a be brought back up again and vote on it again. I mean, is that kind of where we're heading or? If you're asking my opinion, um, I would hope not. There were um, several votes that had come up that I wasn't in agreement with. Um, and I don't vote, but I'm hoping that's not a common practice. Um, there are some areas where if you take a look at what we've done previously, previously where if staff saw that maybe an area that we had platted may be a little bit different or something had changed uh, with the right of way and we'd had to go in and rescind something that was done incorrectly, then that's when we saw the re rescinding of a vote. But um, I, I can't remember but one time where a situation like this had happened and that was with the MLK part. Um, there was a certain amount of lapse time. If you remember that, I think we were so. both in um, um, ruling for that, and um, that's where we did. But I don't vote, but I'm hoping um, that that's not a current practice unless there was something that was done um, that was, uh, yeah. So I'll, and I'll have uh, more information, but absolutely sensitive to, to what you're saying. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'd like to address that issue that Councilman Schmidt, and I, I'm taking this directly from, uh, unless you want me just to wait until uh, number 14 comes up, Mr. Mayor. It's not germane right now. Hmm. I've answered. I thought, I thought. <coughs> oh, because you're, you're, the you're the proposer. Mm -hmm. You're the proposer, so you do get an opportunity to answer. <laughs> Well, and the re in answer to that, a motion uh, can't be rescinded or can't be amended uh, for these reasons. If someone makes a motion, reconsider the vote, and it can be called up, which that never happened. If action on the motion has been carried out and it is impossible to undo, uh, and nothing has happened in that regard, uh, when a resignation is acted upon and the person notified, uh, and then it has to do with membership, and when uh, something other to do was elected. So nothing has happened uh, regarding this uh, motion that would preclude it from a motion to rescind, whereas it, on other occasions, uh, a rescind would be totally out of order because the action had already been completed with a follow through on whatever that motion uh, approved, so. All right, so we have a, a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, in the minutes. In the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We have an agenda. Uh, now it is time for oral presentations. It's your opportunity to talk about non-agenda related items. So if you would please uh, step up to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and um, let us know what your thoughts are. <laughs> Hi, Mayor. Hi, Council. I'm Jim Chapman, 224 Birch. Uh, you know, the last few weeks uh, I've been coming to the meetings. I've been coming a long time, by the way. You know, there's been a lot of disrespect shown in the council chambers. I've heard cowards. I've heard the council called stupid idiots. And I've heard uh, even council people calling other council people out on issues, which I think in number five on the front of the agenda you know, it was against all the rules. And the person that got up here and called the people stupid idiots is a leader 
in our community and ahead of one of the neighborhood associations. And I think that's setting a bad example for other people out there watching the council meetings and especially our little kids. So thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and I would also add that it, it goes, it goes around and uh, we're going to do better uh, keeping things germane, taking names out and trying to stick to a little bit more to what's on what we what we voted on as far as our rules of procedure. So uh, we'll get better. Thank you. But. Hey, John, I think Bruce was edging up to to. Yeah, you can edge. You can edge faster than I can. OK, you ready? Uh, John Sherbin, 1715 Robin Road. I uh, have a little problem with this uh, Five Sullivan Brothers operation. We've spent thousands and thousands of dollars since we sold it. Uh, I've heard many times, we and we were in a rush to get that done because we had all legalities and all this thing that was done so Mr. Uh, uh, the church gentleman that purchased it could get on with business because he had to go and get all these papers signed and and make it legal to run his uh, whatevers. So now we're here in March, we're still paying for stuff. Uh, no chance, I don't know. Uh, we've had two or three major events in the Five Sullen Brothers Center. I don't know who's managing that. I'd be very curious to know, is Waterloo managing that? Uh, where is the, where's the cash going? What's going on? It seems like, uh, uh, when you make a deal with somebody, it shouldn't stretch out six, eight, ten months from the time you said you were going to send the papers. So uh, how many more thousands of dollars are we going to spend on that building? You know, if you guys want to spend money, you can come over and help me fix my house. Uh, the fields are getting muddy, guys. You know, we've got a lot of issues, and we're dragging our feet through a muddy field. And it seems like we need to get, to, uh, get this thing smoothed out a little bit. Thank you. All right, thank you. Can somebody grab the microphone? Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Bruce DeVee Kasser, CRT Apartments, Marlou. I'm calling for appreciation for the bus drivers because they're the prime example of the dedication to their, their duties. And with this rose as bad as they were this afternoon, they didn't have any with the major concerns other than the safety for everybody on the board the bus plus the other other vehicles on the road. And it's really it's an awesome job they did tonight. So my hats off to the bus drivers. Mm -hmm. Can't find better poorly servants. Thank you. <coughs> all right, thank you. So hats off to the bus drivers and the uh, street departments and all those that have to go out there and clean them out uh, for the buses as well. Any other comments? Tim Hurley, 1933 Crabapple Lane in Waterloo, Mr. Mayor, council members. Um, I'm not here for any specific item per se. I'm just pretty much acting on my impulses um, from um, for some time and perhaps maybe a change in tone. So couple of things, and I think my perspective uh, has been winnowed, uh, cultured, if you will, by my recent experience with some civic organizations, business organizations, namely the Waterloo Development Corp, the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance, the Cedar Valley Tech Works, the Waterloo Community Foundation, and the Blackhawk County Gaming Association. So those things um, are, are helping my perspective tonight. None of those organizations um, have sponsored me or said go on down or told me what to say. I'm not speaking for them. I'm speaking primarily as a citizen. The first thing on my list is a hearty thank you to every one of you, all eight of you elected officials. I, I know it's always uh, uh, sometimes mundane and very often a tough job that what you do, especially at budget time. I'm blessed with having experienced what you're going through. 
um, as first as a council representative of Ward 1 for a couple of years and then serving as mayor for six years. So I'm one of a very few privileged, and I, I mean, I don't mean that in the sense that I'm above, but I felt very privileged to have served the citizens of Waterloo. Um, and so I know how excruciatingly difficult your jobs as elected officials can be at times, uh, but I also understand what a tremendous gift it is to succeed and to serve your fellow citizens in the process. So thank you. You're all doing uh, a very good job in what you think is best and how you think it should be done. I had always, uh, in my tenure as a council person and as a mayor, uh, been impressed with staff, and I don't want to be remiss in thanking the department heads, the staff, and the, citizens, the employees of the City of Waterloo for what they do day in and day out. They don't have a two-year career or four-year. Um, they're here every day uh, doing what we ask and direct them to, to do. So, uh, secondly, um, just occurs to me that as human beings, we're hardwired to always want more, no matter what it is. And um, that sometimes raises, that's really it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd usually give people a, a little, a couple seconds right, to wrap I'll be, up. I'll be quick. I, I just, in, in your deliberations, uh, and here I'm speaking from that business and that organizational uh, body that didn't send me down here, but experientially, sometimes in, in regard to tough decisions and particularly the budget, it, what gets, it, it's as important, as important as what gets done is how it gets done. So focusing on the how, uh, I urge you all to proceed towards the what with civility, with compromise, with compassion, cooperation, and reflection. Right. Um, it's easier to count our bones and our aches and pains than it is to count our blessings, and I'd ask you to keep that in mind. Finally, I'll leave you with uh, something we don't, none of us, spend enough time on, and that's the good things, the good things about our community, about our city, and about our government. And I could run the same litany that you could. I just ask you to do that once in a while. From private sector development to improvements in education, a riverfront, downtown, new venues, uh, housing starts. Fact is, you're doing well, people. Mr. Hurley, they're going to they're gonna get me once I leave out of here if I <laughs> allow it to continue. All right. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm but proud of you. you. Uh, I ask you to proceed. Uh, I thank you. I ask you to proceed with civility and uh, keep in, finally keep in mind the good things that you've all been a part of. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like okay. to address? Is there anyone else that would like to address? Who? Council um, for non-agenda related items. Josh Powers, 5721 Blue Sage Road. Um, just to kind of capitalize on what Michelle was probably talking about earlier, this is what I can come up with, the actual value of living in Waterloo. These are addresses here in Waterloo, a cross section of Waterloo. This is their assessed value in Waterloo. That is their taxes in Waterloo. If you figured it out with a 30-year mortgage, uh, that is the difference and then the difference in their taxes as well compared to Cedar Falls. As you can see, the value of Waterloo is here, not in Cedar Falls. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, address the uh, council going a second time? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. The, we're going to have the council. Yeah, I was just trying to see if anyone in the public. So uh, now it's our time for council updates. Uh, any highlights? Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about a couple things. Uh, one of them is I was very 
happy and very proud to have uh, our uh, 50th Ward 3 uh, meeting uh, about 10 days ago. And uh, although it was very inclement weather, we had 10 hearty souls show up. And uh, we had a lively discussion about what was going on uh, in, down here in Council, City Hall, in the City of Waterloo, uh, and uh, some recommendations as far as what they would like to see the budget include, which was that they want services to be maintained. Uh, and if it means paying a little bit more, uh, so be it the cost of living. Uh, is not going down. We don't have price controls or anything like that, but we sure do have uh, costs of uh, different products and services going up. Uh, so that's a message I took from that. Uh, secondly, last week I had an opportunity to uh, be involved with a webinar uh, from Smart Growth, and I think most of the council probably got that um, uh, email as well. And it included, uh, it was an hour-long presentation which uh, dealt with the issue in a program from First and Main. And it is uh, something that everybody on council could si sign up on to be involved in. And just real briefly, um, they have a series of strategies that they want to use. They want to have 300 elected officials sign up by April 1st. I know that I've signed up and signed on to this because of what it represents and how they're going to be appealing to the federal government uh, to make use of this first and main program to enrich, and enrich enhance, uh, and improve our communities. Uh, the, one of their three things was to, uh, they wanted to uh, maintain what we currently have. They wanted to improve things that um, programs and projects that were in need of uh, some um, uh, injection of uh, some new thoughts, but the program idea was still good. And then the final uh, concept involved creating um, uh, new programs and new things that would enhance your communities. And then they have a strategy. It's it's a four-part strategy. And so I, I would encourage the rest of council to look at that and sign on to it if you want to be one of the 300s that they're looking for to uh, have signed on to that by April 1st. And there's a conference April 20, like 1st through 24th that I think is coincidental with the Cedar Valley Coalition uh, going out there as well. And they're going to send 50 people from those 300 to go out there. Then the last thing is that I just had information given to me that the uh, December uh, tax act that was just passed by the federal government includes a new program there called opportunity zones that I think that we should take a look at too, Mr. Mayor. So mm -hmm. with that, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Amos. I uh, just wanted to um, make a comment. I had um, an opportunity last Friday to actually read to some um, grade school students, fourth grade over at Lincoln. And just want to say that was through the um, Big Brothers Big Sisters. I, I believe uh, Councilwoman Juwan also had the opportunity to read, but I'm just, I just want to say that if you get the opportunity to do that, to read to our youth, that was one of the most fulfilling things that I've had happen in a long time. I so, agree. I agree. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, I've had some people still reach out to me from the last um, council update, and just a reminder, I know we were going through budget time, if we could talk about the Mediacom franchise fee, um, or what we Michelle had kind of mentioned out there, we could have a work session on that once budget time is done. And then also I've had some people reach out to me too as far as where we're at with the possible live streaming of council meetings. And if I could just note, we do have a work session scheduled. It'll be for later in March though. Perfect. Yeah, Thank you. And we'll have representatives from there as well. And then I'm just hoping we can get through the next week or so and get things settled and then uh, probably get you and uh, other Chris together and then let's talk about it because um, another council member reached out to me as well about doing the same thing. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, I, as one of the two at-large council members, get to attend a lot of neighborhood association meetings and I also happen to be fortunate enough to be on a number of uh, nonprofit boards and commissions. And, and what I've heard for the last month or two is a request that the, the city council and department heads look to do anything and everything they can do to be able to provide the services that people expect 
at a reasonable rate and to look for any and every efficiency they can. Um, I think we're seeing this at all government levels, including the state, where um, they're really pushing the envelope to return money to the taxpayers' pockets. <clears throat> and I think that's what people would like to see. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I make a motion to receive and place on file all oral comments made. Second. A motion has been made with a second. Uh, is that a roll call? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Okay, I make a motion to receive, place on file, and accept the consent agenda with the addition to number A1 of $2,795,604.89. Second. All right, that motion. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Motion's been made with the time. second. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would like to pull off number six from the Finance Committee report. From the Finance and, Committee? Yeah. The, from the Consent Agenda. Yeah, from the Consent Agenda, but it was under the Finance Committee number six. It was the Convention Center payment. I'd like to discuss that. Do I have a so bills payment? From the bills payment? It was in the finance meeting and it was number was six. I know it was a pre off on finance. I don't know committee. what she's talking about. So it's not on the. Under building maintenance? Is that it on the agenda? Hold on. Hold on. Um, let, let Kelly. That was on the no, finance, on finance committee yeah. as a pre authorization. Yeah. So it's not actually on the. Um, Council agenda for a discussion, so we can't pull it off and talk Correct. about it at all. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, you want to give me a call or something tomorrow, and so I can, you know, try to figure out what's going on. Sure. If you want to? Okay. Sure. All right. Um, the motion has been made with the second, Madam Clerk. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Shimp? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, we have an appointment. Uh, Angela Weekly has been appointed to the Community Development Board. Um, I don't know, is she here? Yeah. Is she here? She Hi, Angie. Uh, thank you much for your service. Uh, you don't have to come up front, but <laughs> now she's anxious. <laughs> thank you much for um, Look forward to uh, to uh, you working hard with the city. So, uh, number two in public hearings. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Item number two is a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that's for the 2018 spring stump removal project. Can we get a second? second? Oh. <laughs> motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Going a second time. One second. Right okay. Give me again. First of your CASR, CRT departments, Waterloo. I'm wondering, is the, is the ground, when they remove the stump to prevent the ash borers, is there anything to treat the hole or the, or the sod where the stump is removed from to prevent the ash borers from coming back? Yeah. Um, is that your only question? Yes. Chris? All right. Mr. Hudding. Paul Hudding, Leisure Services Director. Um, when they remove the stumps, they actually grind down about a foot below the surface and put soil on top of it. Um, that should effectively eliminate the ash borer from the site. We are um, totally infested in the entire state of Iowa, so there's really no effective way to eliminate the ash borer. But, but once that stump is removed and the soil's replaced, it should remove them from the site. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plan, specifications, form of contract, etc. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Council. Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Shim. Yes. Mrs. Klein. Yes. Mr. Amos. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mrs. Jewin. Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. 
All right, that item carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right, that didn't care. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and instruct the city clerk to read the bids. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk? All right, our estimate was $100,000. The first bidder was JBL Rentals, LLC of Parker Bur Parkersburg, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $102,000. Second bidder was Wilson Custom Tree Service of Cresco, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $92,490.81. The third bidder was Schaefer Tree and Lawn Service of Waterloo, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $129,800. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution approving the 2018 Spring Stump Removal Project <coughs> bid to Wilson Custom Trees of Cresco, Iowa, in the amount of $92,480 and $490.81. Um, approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance and authorize the mayor to execute. All right, motion. Motion has been made with the second by Mr. Amos. Uh, Madam Clerk. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shin? Yes. All right, thank you. Item carries. Number three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the request by CRF Rentals for a site plan amendment to the CP Plan Commercial District for construction of a 5,184 square foot commercial building located south of 2911 Southland Drive. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Going a second time. Oh, yes, sir. I'm Chris Fishels from 4736 Yellowstone in Waterloo. I'm here to answer any questions on the project if you guys have any. Okay. I'm the developer on it. No questions? All right, perfect. <laughs> well, the council, council has a round after this. Oh, I'm sorry. So okay. You can well, I'm stay here right. if you guys would have questions. So if you need anything from me, just let me know. All right. Thanks. All right. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file the recommendation of approval of the planning program and zoning commission second and i would probably add his comments as well and the comments here. of mr chris Fischels. all right that motion has been made with a second all in favor aye, aye. opposed the hearing is now closed mr mayor yes sir I'd like to make a motion to receive file consider and pass for the first time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 is amended City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4, approving a site plan amendment on a certain property located south of 2911 Southland Drive. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Council questions? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Officials, what is the, uh, is, is there an urgency on this by chance? Mr. Officials, how, um, how quickly do we need to move on this? I'm very flexible, so I mean, I just want to break ground this spring. April 15th would be ideal, so I mean, I don't see we need to suspend any rules on this situation. I appreciate the interest of it, but uh, I think we're sitting good on time. The staff's been awesome about getting this ran through, so um, we have plenty of time to still break ground in the springtime, so. All right, all right, thank you. Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morgan? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. All right, item carries. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Schmidt? No. Mrs. Jewin? No. Mr. Jacobs? No. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Shim? No. Mrs. Klein? No. Mr. Amos? No. All right, that is our first all no vote. <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> Progress is a happening. 
<laughs> nice job, Chris. <laughs> All right, number number four, please. Anyone? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. To make a motion to receive and file proof publication notice of public hearing on a request by Michael Crane to vacate a platted 20-foot utility easement located along the southerly property line for construction of a 192-square-foot shed located at 235 Niagara Drive. Can we get a second? Well, second. Maybe not. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Yes, Mayor. Uh, Mike Crane, 235 Niagara. Uh, so I purchased this uh, property uh, in June, and beknownst to me, there was a utility easement. And so when I went to apply for a building permit, that was discovered. And so I uh, went to planning and zoning, and they approved this. And so I would just ask that you expedite uh, to get this thing done so I can put my shut up. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral uh, comments and the recommendation of the approval of the planning program and zoning commission. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is closed. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, and consider and pass for the first time an ordinance approving a request by Michael Crane to vacate a planted 20-foot utility easement located along the southerly property line for construction of a 192-square-foot shed located at 235 Niagara Drive. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Council questions? Madam Clerk? Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right, item carries. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion's been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. All right, that item carries. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion has been made with a second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right, item carries. Mr. Number Mayor. five, Mr. Mr. Shemp. Mr. Mayor, number five is a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that's for the sale and conveyance of city-owned property generally located in the Walnut neighborhood to Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity in the amount of $1 with a development agreement. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now open. I know we have a representative here. Um, uh, if, if anyone has anything they would like to say about this project, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and let us know your thoughts. So. All right. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Motion to close the hearing. Second. A motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, resolution authorizing the sale and conveyance of seven city-owned properties generally located within the Walnut neighborhood to Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity for $1. Authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute necessary doc documents. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Um, I think no did provide us with um, the longest piece of paper I've ever <laughs> seen uh, with different items to kind of talk about some of the economic impacts that it's going to have. Just really briefly, do you want to talk about the economic impact? I don't know if this is legal size or... <laughs> Noel Anderson, bigger. Community Planning Development Director. We only have one printer that can print that big, so. Um, summary of just talking about the benefits. Um, you know, first off, the city's going to save money in uh, maintenance of the lots. Um, this is a good uh, show of uh, our aggressive use of the 657A process that we've been using to, to clean up blight and acquire lots for redevelopment. Um, the city's Cura and Clura to encourage infill housing, the city's historic study of the Walnut neighborhood, our partnerships with All-In Grocers, JSA, the Boys and Girls Club, and the Walnut Neighborhood Organization. Uh, total property taxes received, they're going to be building homes in this area. Um, under the agreement over the 10-year span, seven new homes and rehabilitation of other homes in the area by Habitat, plus a reinvestment by others of other homes, grocery store, JSA, and general uh, support of the neighborhood. 
Um, again, we're gaining new homes, new tax base, um, and really putting in some new development and a major entryway into the city. Well, just uh, also with, with regards to, um, yeah, we're building new houses and, you know, the south side and other areas, but it's good to see a continuation of investment in some of our areas that need the help and support and some new vitality in life. So um, this is going to help overall for the city. So um, any questions for, for no? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm totally I'm in favor of this. Uh, but one of the things when I was going through this, it talks about the different properties, but and then it, at the end, it gives a, you know, platted legal description, but it, there was no aerial view or anything like that that showed where the properties are. Could could we get that? No, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, we have a map on that. We'll get that to you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, no other questions. Uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Dewan? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Mayor. Tonight and carries. There's yes, still sir. some left to read on that, right? Mm. There's still some left to read on that. Uh, yeah, the adopt a resolution. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but after the dollar. <laughs> okay. I move to adopt a resolution approving the development agreement with Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said agreement. Doc, second. Did you say done? Hold oh, <laughs> <laughs> on. Well oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, that motion has been made with the second, Madam Clerk. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morsey? Yes. Mr. Shemp? Yes. All right, congratulations. We're expecting big things. <laughs> All right, can someone take number six, please? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Amos. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing that is for the demolition and site clearance services contract for 807 East 4th Street and 809 through 811 East 4th Street. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to these particular this particular item on the agenda? I think we had a presentation about this a little while ago, um, what's going to happen there. Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now closed. I'd like to make a motion adopting a resolution confirming approval of plan specifications, form of contract, et cetera. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Let me take a step back. Uh, I'm probably a uh, no, because some folks that may be watching probably haven't seen this. So tell us what's happening here. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. As you recall, the city of Waterloo entered into a development agreement with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, to redevelop these two sites, um, at 809 and, and uh, 810, 809 to 811 and 807 East 4th Street. So there's multiple addresses for the two buildings. They've sat vacant for a number of years. As a part of our part of the development agreement, we are going to demolish these structures and raise them to the ground, and the teen center will be built on this site. So it's a good reuse for this area, um, eliminating blight, as well as bringing up new development in the Walnut neighborhood area. So a, a, a little bit different, so a little bit different based upon uh, the location. Um, I know one thing, um, when you're coming out of East High School and you're a high school student and you're trying to think about your future to, to walk by and see blighted buildings um, right outside of where you're at and also supporting the development that's taking place in that area. So um, it's a very timely and a very timely uh, happening and we had been looking for years to figure out how we can tie something in positive to that location so that's correct um, all right any other questions for no madam clerk mr amos yes mr schmidt yes mrs Jewin. yes mr jacobs yes mr morris yes mr shim yes mrs klein yes all right i don't see mr Rowe here but no. that's another great one too <laughs> mr mayor i'd like to make oh we're not done yet we're I'm not sorry. done yet <laughs> mr ahead. mayor i'd like to make a motion adopting a resolution authorizing to proceed second that motion has been made with a second uh madam clerk 
Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. All right. Item carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and instruct the city clerk to read bids and refer to community planning and development director. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Madam Clerk. The estimate for option A is $13,000. The estimate for option B is $18,000. Our first bidder was Kelly Demolition and Excavating LLC of Mount Vernon, Iowa. They provided 5%. Any relation? No, they spelled Kelly wrong. <laughs> 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 we forgot the E at the end. Um, they provided 5% security. Their bid for item A is $19,800. Item B, $25,550. Second bidder was Peterson Contractors Incorporated of Rhinebeck, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount for A is $10,660.50. B, $16,491. Third bidder was Benton Sand and Gravel, Cedar Falls, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Bid A, $12,770. B, $16,840. Fourth bidder was Frickson Brothers Excavating of Evansdale, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Item A, $15,000. B, $25,000. Final bidder was Lehman Trucking and Excavating Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Bid for option A, $9,000. B, $10,000. All right, thank you. Competition is good. All right, uh, seven, eight, and nine, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, who is that? Mr. Schmidt. Um, Mr. Schmidt. Item number seven is adopting a resolution approving a request by CGA Engineers on behalf of BCS Properties, LLC, for the final plat of Village West, second edition, in uh, three-lot improvement subdivision located in the northwest corner of Highway 63 and West Ridgeway Avenue. The next item is adopting a resolution approving development agreement with CRF Rentals LLC for the development of a 5,000 square foot commercial building with a value no less than $282,000, offering property tax rebates of year one through three at 70% and year four through seven for 65% and authorize the mayor to execute said document. And the last item is adopting a resolution approving funding agreement with the Blackhawk County Gaming Association for $750,000 match for University Avenue reconstruction enhancements and authorize the mayor to execute said document. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Council Mr. questions Mayor. or anyone with questions? <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Would it, would it be appropriate to table number eight until that is fully passed on the second and third reading? Anderson. I would be I would be in favor of number eight. I'm just Mr. Noel, Anderson. <coughs> Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. Um, one is a zoning action and one is a economic development action under the TIF district powers. Um, you could certainly approve it tonight, number eight, and move ahead with that. Obviously, he still will not be able to take out a building permit until the zoning action is done. Um, so they're they're not actually contingent upon the other each other in terms of a timing wise, but he will need to get both actions done for construction. So the one talks about uh, the deal, the other one is just the re Sorry. rezoning of Correct. that area. So if we if we go through and just say on the rezoning, uh, the last reading or second, third, or third is struck down, how does that impact what's on number eight? Is that? Number eight would be there, but he wouldn't leg be, legally be able to build under the zoning action. So he wouldn't be allowed this because it didn't pass. So Correct. Just checks and balances. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Madam Clerk. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right. Item carries. Could someone take 10 through? I'll take 13, please. Take a resolution approving an agreement with Blackhawk County for improvements to Donald Street and Elk Run Road and authorize the mayor and the city clerk to execute said document. Second resolution is a resolution approving submission of grant application for diesel emissions reduction grant, DERA, to replace one 
2005 International Harvester D466 garbage truck outdated tier 2 emissions with a tier 4 2018 emissions. Third, resolution approving award of hotel motel mini tax grant to the Cedar Falls Lion Club in the amount of $1,950. And finally, resolution approving federal regulation procurement requirements for FEMA projects. Second. Okay. The motion has been made with the second. Uh, questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. On um, number 12, I noted in there the attachments that they'd requested 12000 uh, but this says 1950 and I'm just wondering if that lower amount is going to get them to the point or to the, um, is it going to meet their requested need for which they asked this? Uh, Tavis is not here, but I don't know if they make it a practice of giving everything they need um, to organizations. So uh, I don't have that answer for you. Um, Mr. Mayor, yeah. I do believe their awards are contingent upon a successful implementation of the project, however. So if it's not enough money to get the job done, I don't think they'll get this money either. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Sharon. All right. Thank you. And then, Mr. Mayor, now number 13 is, a resol you know, it's the FEMA thing. And if this is not a specific project, yeah. are we giving their okay for the federally required uh, proposals that they might submit or what is going on here? Uh, I'll, I'll try to do a part of it, but um, remember we had a conversations about um, some the Iowa Homeland Security coming to the city of Waterloo um, from the um, OIG visit that we had in May. There were some particular things that we needed to have procurement, right, uh, procurement wise, which has to be, um, we basically have to do these things because it's consistent with federal guidelines and we needed to update in a couple areas. So these are the suggestions and we're just taking the suggestions from Homeland Security and trying to make sure that we follow the federal process. But Michelle, if you want to add, add to these items. Michelle Wiener, Chief Financial Officer. So the federal government adopted new grant guidelines that were effective for federal agencies December 26 of 2014. Those are now filtering down to local agencies such as ours. So most of these requirements are new, but they will start applying to federal projects. And these specifically are drafted for FEMA, but almost all of them will apply to everything that we do going forward. So, so Mr. Mayor and Michelle, so we're just approving the requirements. We're not approving any open, open book for any project to go through or be approved, is that correct or? No, these just are, this is a document that will give our staff the guidelines when they want to make purchases for things that would be reimbursed by a federal grant, they are gonna have to go through all these hoops basically okay. for that to qualify. Okay, thanks. Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Number 11, could we have an explanation about that? Is yeah. that garbage truck old and broken down? Yeah, Sandy. Sandy Grieco, Interim Public Works Director. Um, no, it's the emissions on it. Actually, um, the sanitation supervisor was looking online trying to find grants for us to apply for things. And he found this and they will in turn match, we'll have a match for it. And it's, um, the garbage truck is, is outdated, but it's, how can I say this? Um, it's a backup for our other garbage trucks right now. So if we change the emissions on it, it's gonna update it and it will be a perfect backup. So when one of our normal garbage trucks is down for repairs, which happens every week, um, this will be a backup so we can get back out on the street. So you're applying for a grant. Right, to we're be just able applying to for the for grant. It. So if you don't get the grant right now. We'll just use the truck as it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, we appreciate, or I appreciate any types of outside funding that we can take a look and try to build from. So, all right. Uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. 
Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. yes. Mrs. Juin? Yes. All right, thank you. Number 14. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to rescind the action taken by this council on 2518 regarding item 1B4, recommendation of appointment of Jonathan Ulrich from Civil Service List to position of garage mechanic at Public Works Effective 2718. Second. Well, that motion has been made with a second. Mr. Um, prior, prior to some discussion, what I'm going to ask is this obviously has been where folks haven't agreed. I am asking that from this, when one, when we made all, not all agree, moving forward, if we could keep our comments germane, if we could be um, not accusatory, uh, we keep uh, other council members' names out of our mouth, but whatever it is, if we could, if, we, if there is debate or conversation that we could keep it germane and, and all of us lead by example to the folks that are watching it in the audience. But Mr. Mr. Um, um, Shemp. Did Mr. Zellifer have a? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, Dave, we've had some questions the last couple of weeks. Could you uh, stand up and tell us uh, some of those answers? And then afterwards. Um, I have comments after that. Is that a, Dave Zeller for city attorney. Was that a comment or a question, Mr. Shim? Am I premature? Well, I, 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 you need, I want you to make a presentation about, you know, the questions sure. I've been asked. We need to is this the procedural question? Well, bottom line is, uh, was the action of uh, February 5th legal? Is that what we're talking about? Uh, because there's lots of potential yes, issues. Yes, the bottom sir. line is uh, the city council is, uh, we have a mayor council form of government, as you all well know. And under Iowa Code Section 400.15, dealing with civil service appointments, the bottom line is the council makes the final decision. Um, what we had before in, in August of 2017 was a committee, a committee that's no longer in existence, but it was the Human Resources Committee. That is a standing committee uh, according to the ordinances of the city of Waterloo. Their job is to collect data, make a recommendation to the council, either into the, in the form of a motion, a resolution, or an ordinance. And then the council acts. And that's exactly what happened in, on February 5th. The uh, standing committee made a recommendation to hire the gentleman. And the council is, at that time, uh, free to say no, which they did. The state code gives them that right, and they exercise that right. Now you can all say we should have had some prior warning, you don't like, like the way they did it or blah, blah, whatever, but that's the law and that's what it is. And uh, uh, it's section 400.15 of the Iowa Code. I've confirmed this with a number of other city attorneys uh, and from around the state and they all agree with me. I did not receive one dissenting vote from anyone. So as much as a lot of you might not like it, it's legal. Right. And then, um um, Kelly, can you explain, because um, I've, I've had some questions about uh, rescind versus reconsideration, and if that is um, just what that actually means, or what are, what, is, what are folks being asked to vote on right now? So there has been some confusion between reconsideration and rescinding a motion. Reconsideration is outlined in our city code under four, or excuse me, 143F, and that has to take place immediately after a vote is taken. So if you'll recall, um, there were some requests to reconsider the motion taken by council, but the members of two members from the prevailing side have to make that motion to reconsider, and that did not take place. So at this point in time, what can take place is a recon or excuse me, is a recension or rescinding the motion that was taken. And Mayor touched on this a little bit at the beginning of the meeting. Typically, when um, rescinding has come to council, it's been to rescind a resolution. And we've rescinded things such as setting the date of public hearing. For example, if we need to push back a public hearing date and time, when we're rescinding that, what you're doing is you're removing that from the record. So you're removing the um, public hearing date that you set prior to adjust it so that there's only one public hearing date set on the agenda. So un under this circumstance, to um, rescind this motion 
if it were to be approved, what you'd be doing is removing the action that was taken prior from the record. So you would be taking his appointment and putting him back into the consideration pool on the civil service list. So that if the council chose to appoint Mr. Ulrich at a later date, he would still be eligible or the council could also consider a different candidate. If this vote fails, then he cannot be considered at any point in time in the future because the council has voted to not appoint this individual. Mr. Mayor. Then, so my vote on this was purely budgetary. Um, none of the seven of us sitting up here know what our budget is going to look like next year. It is correct that this position had been budgeted for, but this was for fiscal year, which ends in July. So that's in three months. Um, I'm told how important this position is to our city, yet I see that it took until February to actually put it on the agenda. I feel bad for all parties involved, but unfortunately we're dealing with a different set of circumstances that the previous council was. I agree with the statement that elections have consequences. I knocked on hundreds of doors during the election and heard loud and clear that people in my ward want to see lower taxes. I was elected on a platform to lower taxes and took my seat on the council in January. Since then, I've seen the harsh realities of a city budget. My colleague from Ward 3 can be as pro-tax as he'd like and he's entitled to vote however he wants. I would ask him to have that same respect for me and our other colleagues on the council. He has cast several votes while on council that I have disagreed with, but you will not see me bringing them forward, motions to rescind his past actions. The majority of the council agreed with him on past votes and I respect the will of the majority of the people's representatives. On this issue, my vote was a no because I want to see how our budget looks next year and not how it looks this year. It would be fiscally irresponsible of me to hire a new $84,000 position before I even voted on my first budget. After we pass a budget, I'm willing to revisit this issue though. Although that willingness keeps losing ground each week as I sit here and listen to grandstanding and mudslinging. With that being said, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to tape I make a motion to table the motion on the floor until at least January of 2018 after the new fiscal year begins. Second. And I also move to call the question. Excuse me, you said January of 2018. Excuse me, July. July. July 2018. So I will, the comments about mud slinging and grandstanding was how I opened up that I kind of want to move away from those comments. And mm -hmm. just as I'm asking Mr. Morrissey, I'm also asking all, all of you as well. So, um, Mr. there Mayor. was a motion to call the question. There was a motion to table until the to table the vote until July 2018 and to call the question. And I seconded the first motion. What is that? We got two. Then we have to vote. So we've got two motions combined into one. Hold on a second. I don't know that you can do that. Uh, I think uh, I think we need to do one motion at a time, please. So the, the if the motion to table is first, you should do that first. And it, re it received a second from Mrs. Klein, correct? Yes. Yeah. That's fine, but I also heard a, a second motion, and uh, I'm not sure. We, we just make sure we know which one we're voting on. Which one are we voting on? It would have to be the table. No, it could be the motion to... What was the other motion? Call the question. I believe. Table and call the question. I think the second one was call the question, wasn't mm -hmm. it? I think that's what I heard. So we've got a section in our code. It's under Title One, Chapter Four, Section Three, Subsection D, multiple issues within one question. It states if a question in debate contains several distinct propositions. Any member may have the question divided when the sense admits of it prior to the vote thereon. So if you want the vote, if you want the motion divided into two separate questions, someone can make a request to do that. So moved. Okay. Mr. Mayor. So what are we doing first? What's so moved? I mean, uh, the motions on. Which motion are we taking? So the, 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 the first motion was. Um, so, you, so we have a, do you want me to explain it? Ahead. So we have a motion and a second on the table. 
to table the item and to call the question. Our code states that if you have multiple questions to consider within one motion, that a member of council can request that it gets divided. Mrs. Klein has made the request to divide it. It does not say that it needs to have a second or anything like that. And so, Mr. Mayor, which issue are we voting on? So there's no discussion. So first, we would need to vote on the motion to table. Okay. So and then, we and then need to call the but really, question. we wouldn't need to call the question then. So is that is that debatable? Well, do, I need, do I need to resend my motion to call the question and just move to table? I think that'd be appropriate. We would vote on that right now. Yeah. All right, I, Mr. Mayor. So I, I say I rescind my motion to call the question then, and my motion to table until July 2018 stands. Um, can we clarify? Doesn't a motion to table need um, two thirds vote? I could be wrong. No. No. Okay. Thank no. you. So is there any debate that happens on this with debate. this motion? Because you can't call any question. That is a a separate one, but don't you get in it? Yes, sir. A motion to table is not debatable. Because I think we need a majority. Simple majority. Just simple? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, with, without any debate uh, on the motion to table, we have a standing motion that was read and seconded that we have not even had an opportunity, some of us, to speak to. And I would consider a motion to table um, germane, but only after the motion itself has been given its proper due course of uh, the people that want to speak to that initial motion being allowed to talk to that motion. So I'm going to lean to my city attorney. What mm -hmm. is that allowed to? A motion uh, to table uh, cannot be made while someone else has the floor. And usually it is uh, following all debate. So you have to allow. On the original motion. So you have to allow conversation. Yeah, I think right now what we should do is have a conversation uh, about the original motion, Mr. Morrissey's uh, motion and uh, move on. Author of the, so yeah. Mr. Morrissey can speak and then folks, then we take a vote on yeah. the motion to table. Yeah, uh, you know, a motion to rescind is not that unusual. Um, we do it all the time. You probably don't recognize it for what it is. This is the first time I think in the 150 consecutive meetings I've been here where it's been adversarial. Normally, it's we have the wrong legal description, and we passed a motion, and we need to rescind it and do it over again, something simple and mundane like this. So we have to remember that uh, the bottom line is the motion has been made. It should probably, I guess I would recommend it be voted on uh, and, uh, and not tabled, but just for purposes, I don't, I'm not into policy and politics, but just from a cleanliness standpoint, get it done one way or the other and uh, move on, but right now, let's handle Mr. Morrissey's motion, move it on, and uh, see what happens. So, but the question, question I have is, Mr. Morrissey, um, since he's the, um, the one that placed this on here as the, um, the person that did it, does he have an opportunity to say something to what um, Mr. Shemp had made and it was second. That's what I want to know. Yeah, the motion to rescind is debatable. But is the motion to table debatable? No. So we have to go ahead and take a vote on the motion to table right now. Well, we're not debating the motion to table. We're, we're, the, the motion to table, I don't think, is even proper while there's another motion on the floor right now. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jewin, it hasn't been debated. Can he show us that? where it says there's a time limit on when to say we'd like to table. I'd like to see the chapter and verse. Well, it's a common sense type thing. And most, well, let me see if I can see it. Chapter and all verse. I, all, I, all, I, all, chapter. I want, all I want to know, the, the motion on the table is obviously going to stand. All I need to know does is Mr. Morrissey able to have comments? That's all, that's all we need to know. Is that legal or not? Mr. Mayor? You might have something. Yeah, might have something. 
the bottom line is the motion to table is not allowed when somebody else has the floor. Okay, and it was my understanding Mr. Morrissey had the floor. Did he yield it to Mr. Shimp then? Well, I did not have the floor when Mr. Uh, Shimp um, asked for question. recognition from the presiding officer, uh, Mr. Zellifer. Okay. But so. then again, at the same time I'm saying that, I'm saying that I had not been given an opportunity to um, do anything other than read the motion and have it seconded, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a chance to speak. Mm -hmm. And I, no, nobody else on council did either to this motion. And in the interest of transparency, in the interest of us being a deliberative body, um, I think we should be allowed to debate this. Mr. If the, the city council is free to do its thing here as far as how you want to. Um, Robert's Rules of Orders doesn't cover everything. When they say you can, when uh, someone has the floor, you can't make a motion to, to lay on the table, and, and that's what happened. Uh, I guess it, it depends on the council. Do you want to debate this some more? A simple motion to the table would be easy. It would be four to three, be all over. Probably we wouldn't see it until July, but who knows? Uh, but I do think debate is why we're here today, and getting rid of the motion to rescind uh, one way or the other would be at everybody's benefit. So who has comment? I do, ma'am. I have comments. And you are free to lead the way with comments uh, as, you, as you deem fit. You're in charge of the meeting. <laughs> Can I just make a note on Robert's Rules of Order, too? Uh, there's been a lot of debate lately, um, especially surrounding this item, um, about where Robert's Rules of Order fits in with our Rules of Order. So we always have to keep in mind the hierarchy of laws and order within the government, too. The number one that trumps everything is state law. Where state law is silent, we fall back to our city code. What our city code says about parliamentary rules to govern is vague. It says, in all cases not provided for herein, the usual parliamentary rules which govern parliamentary bodies shall govern the city council where they are applicable. Our city code does have some rules of procedure, but it doesn't specifically state that Robert's rules of order have to be followed at all times. Um, and then oftentimes they're not followed very well on our council. So just a little bit of a note on those parliamentary rules. So that, Mr. that Mayor? goes back to the question is uh, Mr. Morrissey was the author of the original motion. Um, and it has been asked that we table that. Does Mr. Is Mr. Morrissey allowed an opportunity to at least talk about this so we can finally vote on this and move on? I think what Mr. Zellifer is trying to say and what I'm trying to say is that um, you're free to debate. Let's, I mean, can we just talk, just talk and move? Okay. Let's talk. Come, Mr. Morrissey. I'll rescind my motion to table. Oh. You rescind the second? No, I won't rescind the second. So, so it stands. So if there's any other comments or questions, now's the time. All right. I, I, I'm, you really got me. I, I'm, we have a motion to table that hasn't been, even though the motioner asked to have it removed, but then the seconder is not allowing that. So do we move ahead with the original motion? Or what, Mr. Mayor? I think folks were at the point of at least giving you an opportunity to say something so we can move this issue forward. Waterloo yeah. is many issues, many opportunities. So let's, we would love to hear what you have to say. Well, I, first of all, um, uh, regarding tabling this, we got a person, John Olerich, who, um, it, you know, if we're going to wait till July, John Olerich's supposed to wait around till July. Um, I mean, talk about something that's unfair. I think that's unfair. As to any comments about me grandstanding or doing anything else, uh, if, if following parliamentary rules and procedures is grandstanding, or if defending and standing up for one of our fellow residents of Waterloo and my belief and other people in the community's belief 
that that person has been harmed, then I guess I have been grandstanding. Uh, but I will continue to grandstand if I believe somebody has been harmed uh, in the course of any action taken by myself or any other council uh, vote. Uh, I don't see that as being inappropriate. I have not been uncivil to anybody uh, in regards to this. This is something that I'm very passionate about, as you know, Mr. Mayor, uh, and anybody on council knows. And to be passionate about an issue and to be in defense of something that I believe resulted in a harm to somebody in Waterloo, I will continue to do that. Okay. Now, in, in relation to the motion to rescind, <clears throat> the reason why um, I did this, and it's contrary to what I've heard uh, our city clerk as well as even the city attorney say, is that Robert's Rules of Order does take hold in all cases. Our code of ordinance even speaks to that. And it, the result of a motion to rescind a, in no way, shape, or form means that John Olerich could not be assigned to this uh, position. What a motion to rescind does, and this is according to Robert's Rules of Order, um, applied, simplified and applied, the 2014 edition, which is what I look to uh, in situations like this. It says, if the motion is adopted, and that's the motion to rescind, the previously adopted motion is reversed. That's what it says, or changed. Okay, so that is where I come with this as far as the criteria that has to be met in order to allow a motion to rescind. And all those criterias, criterion are in place. Now, if a motion to rescind was left and tabled, I have no idea what action could uh, proceed from this point forward until July 1st, but more than likely there's gonna be some action that would make the motion to rescind moot at that point in time. The other thing that I want to note, and I respect uh, uh, Attorney Zellifer's opinion, Kelly's opinion, but what happened on August 28th um, was a council of the whole voted to um, start the civil service process and to make an appointment. And I have those uh, documents that show that that's what the Council of Seven approved. Now, because there was only four there that day, is not my fault. Um, that's who the three that didn't show up that day. So if that is not a council action, then in order to follow the logic that City Attorney Zellifer is saying, um, and uh, uh, the clerk is saying, then what would have to be the case is that on February 5th, that a consent agenda item would have had to include a motion to start the civil service process and make the appointment. If what is being said is that the Council of Seven never voted on it. So what happened on February 5th only had to do with the recommendation of appointment that was made by Sandy Greco um, and to John Olerich. Therefore, that makes that motion completely wrong if you don't include also the motion that was made to get it started. That would require, as 400.15 states, for both those actions to be approved by the council. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, it applies only with the recommendation of appointment, but it doesn't apply with starting the civil service process if it's required that the council has to approve both. And that's what 400.15 says, and that's what the council of the whole on August 28th did. It approved that. So what I'm asking is on the 5th of February, that motion was not a proper motion and that that motion was made as part of a consent agenda and needs to be approved either as a body up or down and it was not. Therefore, rescinding that action makes that entire body of motions at that time subject to that approval. That's what my argument is. That's why I gave, 
I, I asked for this uh, motion to be put on the agenda a week ago, and I will continue to main that, maintain mm -hmm. that. And that in, is in no way grandstanding. That to me is following proper procedures that are pertinent because our code of ordinances says that where it not where it's not spoken to in our code of ordinances or state law, we address it in here. And that's what I have done, Mr. Mayor. And I ask for the council to vote to get John Ulrich this position, which should have been approved on February 5th. All right. Thank you, Mr. Morrissey. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> been thinking about this a long time, had some conversations with a few folks. One of my biggest concerns with all of this is, is the fact that I hear council members saying that I didn't vote on this individual. I voted on a budget issue. This vote was not about budget. This vote was about this young man being hired by the city of Waterloo for a position that was researched, for a position that was determined that was needed for the city of Waterloo to take care of maintenance issues for the garage. That was why I voted the way that I voted. You know, you have to understand that the vote that was taken in my mind was not a right vote simply because when I hear people say, well, I'm voting because of the budget, this wasn't about the budget. This was about the young man and giving him the job. That was where this should have gone. The budget issues and those things are important. I understand that. I also understand that a year ago or so, we voted on a budget to put this position there to help our city. Now, because we have new council members, they have the right to do what they did. I understand that totally. But what I'm seeing here is, is an opportunity to rescind a vote that was not even voted Um, by council and there's a motion to table so we need to take that up now let me so the motion to table just for reason so so but it, you need to have a second to withdraw it so I just need to understand uh, if if there's a motion and a table and we vote on that to take a look at this position in July or when was it July July 2018. For, for July 2018, um, then it extends to there. If the motion is rescinded, um, or if the motion to rescind is voted down, then it's done as of now. Um, it, I mean, as far as the person that was voted on that night, right? Well, first we'd have to get... So you're, I'm, you're I'm asking, asking the alternative because if if it does so you're asking if the motion to table goes through and then back in July when we pick it up again if the motion to rescind fails what happens right correct okay so in July if the motion to table passes we don't vote on the right so if you vote to table then we don't take this up again until July. And then if the motion to rescind does not pass, then the motion that's on the books stands. And we'd have to have a motion to bring it back on the table. And then if the motion to rescind fails, then the, the 
vote taken by council stands. So he would not be appointed to the position. But if we table it, we're not voting on the motion to rescind. Right. All you, if you vote to approve a table, all you're doing is but voting to push it back till July. My question, Mr. Mayor, is if that position remains in the fiscal year 19 budget, um, so we've got it in the fiscal year 18 already, if it's um, if we're convinced that it's important enough that it stays in the 19, then why would we have to wait until July? Because as soon as the budget's approved next Thursday, could we not take it up right after that? Because we've got it approved in the 18 already, and if we approve it in the 19, we wouldn't have to wait till July 1, would we? And my understanding is if we vote to table it and approve it, then somebody's got to make the motion to pull it off the table, well, we'd have to and we then vote we, on the recension. It, then we have to bring it back. Yeah, um, but somebody July has to move. or prior to a little bit before July. Be anytime. Well, we we it has to be back on the agenda. No, it because if we give a time frame, don't we have to put it on there anyway? Yeah, if you so. if the motion to table until July 2018 is approved, it can't come back on the agenda until oh, July. Until July one. Okay. Yeah. So there we have it. Mr. Um, Mayor, can't um, a, someone on the prevailing side? No, can't, a, can't Mr. Shimp change that to what Sharon suggests? You could do it sooner. Why not? They need the position. He has. Um, so if he's on the, the prevailing side, could bring that back whenever? You if it's before be July. The prevailing side. Anybody can bring it, it, it would have to be table. voted. Okay. It'd have to be voted down. And then you would need two members from the prevailing side, so two people who voted it down to bring it back at the next meeting. So that would be on the 12th to reconsider the vote that was taken in order to do a reconsideration. You're talking about the recent? Um, you know what? I think we're getting really confused yes. <laughs> with timetables and things like that. So the motion on the table is to table the item until July of 2018. Did you say July? And all I'm it's asking. It's the table to, the rescind vote until two, that to July of 2018. Correct. And yeah, then so. if you, if that fails, then we go back and we need to vote on then you the vote motion on. to rescind. Hey, Mr. Mayor, all, all, if, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. all that I'm asking is to, for um, Councilman Shimp, having made that motion, if he would consider or change that to meet what chair, what uh, council member Jewin has suggested. That's all I'm asking of uh, the uh, person who submitted the motion. Well, to he, he ended up, you, you ask, you ask, and it was to even get out of it, it was, it was denied by the person at second. At some point, we're gonna have to take up this vote. Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey. And I'm voting on the tabling. Correct. Yeah. This is a vote on the motion to table until July of 2018. No. Mr. Shimp? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? No. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Juin? No. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right. Item tabled until uh, July. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned.